Hi everybody, my name is Shannon and welcome to my channel, Another Yarn. Thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate it. If you've been around a while, you know today's Monday and it is by far one of my favorite videos to record. And that's because every time I'm prepping for this video and I've got my stack of stuff just all precariously perched around me so I don't have to reach out of frame and, and all that other stuff too terribly much or have too many weird cuts and everything, because I learned how to do that, you know, in my video, um, I'm amazed. I, you know, for life of me, there are some weeks I just feel like I haven't done a lot. This week being it's, you know, January 2024, I've really pushed forth to try to get some of my projects done that I had on the needles as evidence by what I'm wearing. And I think I've done everything but sleep in this thing. I don't know. It's just absolutely amazing. This is the Plumos uh, Yoke Sweater. Yeah, yoke jumper. I'll have that information down below. I love it. The yarn originally called for in this, I think it's a DK weight sweater. I used this, the Remix Light by Barocco. Um, and I'll read you what it is. It's a 100 grams, 432 yards. Now to me, they say it's a three, you know, a light three, right? DK weight. 432 yards for 100 grams. That's fingering weight yardage. That is crazy. This stuff works up absolutely amazing um it goes so so far i uh, i believe i used three of the purple and then uh, 30 grams on the white and that's it i did use all of the purple that i had with the uh, the sleeves as far as that goes um i'm absolutely loving it there's just it's just amazing and one of the other things that i wanted to show this was fresh hot off the needles oh yeah I have worn it to work and I danced and oh yeah, I danced. I'm, I did. And I, I created a short and how excited I am on this and everything. And then not only was I wearing this at work, dancing around with my purple shoes, mind you, I definitely had my purple shoes. And uh, then I also pulled up the short that I made the video and everything. And I'm like, look, 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 you know, because watching me in person dancing wasn't enough. Yeah, I know I'm a goofball. I'm, I am such a child. I'm so childish. I'm good with that though. One of the other things, I really am, one of the other things I wanted to show you with the Remix Light, this one hasn't been washed and it feels amazing. And this one here was washed and put in the dryer. Uh, the yarn, it's supposed to not be put in the dryer, but you know what? Things happen. No big deal. I still wear this one all the time. I'm going to get this up close. Yeah, the sun's coming in pretty good. But you can see, you can still see the stitches. It hasn't felted down. It hasn't damaged the uh, the top in any way. I still absolutely love it. Um, it's definitely softer. Uh, you know, I, I can feel a slight difference between brand new and everything. And this one is just more like the most comfortable, you know, you, you got your lounge around sweatshirt or whatever, and it's super comfortable. That's what this one has turned into. They're both amazing. Just wanted to throw that out there because a lot of times when we get a yarn and it says, you know, special care instructions, we're like, no, thank you. I'm going somewhere else. And this is supposed to be machine wash and cold water on delicate cycle and lay flat to dry. Like I said, it did get dried and it's not destroyed. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but if you make something out of it and it does get washed and it does get dried, there's a good chance that you're going to still be fine with it. So there you go. That's my two cents on it. Uh, how much fun is that? So yes, this was one of my finished projects. I know. Okay. Full disclosure. I started this in 2022. So it was about time I got it done. I did the yoke and the body and then I got stuck on the sleeves. The sleeves are not hard. But that's generally when I put the project down and I have a lot of vests, unintentional vests, you know. So I'm taking advantage of the new year and I'm taking advantage of, hey, let's get excited, clean up some of our mess, get some things done, maybe do a little organizing. I even have a notebook that I have been writing in for two whole weeks. Yeah, I have. Let's see how long that lasts. But anyway, you know, there's memes about that. There's probably, probably for a reason, right? So I got that done. And the other one I got done is... This one I started in October. This is the Harvest Cardigan, and I used Lion Brand Comfy Cotton that I received from a Mystery Yarn Challenge. I had four cakes of it, and I used three and one quarter cakes, and it works up really, really well. It feels great on. I gifted this to my daughter. She's already worn it. I'll get some pictures in, and uh, you can see my lovely daughter, and it looks amazing on her. I have put it on. 
it looks better on her. So, you know, and it's more her colors. So there you go. Uh, this pattern, if you haven't looked at it and you're, if you're a beginner knitter and you're, I want to make a garment, I, I want to stretch my skills and make a garment, I would highly recommend going out and looking at Tin Can Knits on Ravelry. She has a beginner series, what she calls a simple series. And there's a lot of very professional lines, like this right here, that pickup line, very professional lines and, and wonderful details to her projects, but they're very simple to execute and make. And they range in sizes from little kid tiny to, you know, Papa, you know, Nana and Papa, you know, all the way up to the multi X sizes. So it's very size inclusive and there's tutorial support on them also. She has paid for patterns and free patterns, but in her simple collection, Brick is one I've made multiple times. I've made Flax multiple times. These are sweater names. And this one is called Harvest. Highly, highly recommend. Not affiliated, just really enjoy another designer who's just doing a fabulous job. So there you go. But yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh, two big projects off. And this is the three quarters of a ball I have left, right? So I got four of these in my mystery yarn challenge. Four. That was crazy amount of yardage. I got all of this done. I still have more left. I know. But this was October's. This was in October. I did other things back in October, but that was my October's yarn. Like, oh, you know, that's a lot. There's nothing wrong with the cardigan. I just got a lot of other things. And that one was originally going to be for me. And things for me just get pushed to the back shelf because, you know, I'm making other things. And besides, October, you're going to make a cardigan for yourself because, oh, no, 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 no. There's holiday projects to be made. That's how that works. So, um, you know, good segue. Speaking of Mystery Yarn Challenge, I got my Mystery Yarn from January. How exciting. So I'm going to show you. I got to reach down and grab this. I'm going to show you what I started. I haven't finished it yet. So I started with the first one. Okay, so I got... I'll make another video and show a bunch of the colors. I got this yarn. Gorgeous. Look at this. This is Cascade Tangier. And this one was in a sec, uh, second, a separate bag. This one was a gift. This one wasn't a, um, uh, you know, necessarily part of the challenge. This is a blend and it's, it's very Noro-esque. It's very pretty. Um, let me see. What's the stuff in this? 50% silk, 16% cotton, 17% acrylic and 17% viscose. And the colors, look at that. Isn't that stunning? So very Noro-esque. So my daughter-in-law came and visited me in my yarn room. You know, we were up here and everything with the kids. And uh, this was just sitting in the window ledge because I had just gotten it. It was in my window ledge where I was just holding it, finally playing with it, and I just sat it there. And my room has colors, right? I have colors everywhere. And she, her eyes were drawn to this and made an immediate beeline. It's like, ooh, what's that? What are you gonna make with that? So I'm gonna make her something with it. So this right here, isn't that gorgeous? Look at that corrugated rib. This is a pattern by, I believe her name is Frankie Brown, and it is a free pattern on Ravelry. And this is called the emergency hat. And you're like, that's not a hat. That's it's a parallelogram. I don't know, that's not a hat. Did I say it right? The parallelogram? Please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to get my shapes wrong, right? So this right here, you, you make this this tube, right? You make this slant, right? This curg, this ribbing, this knitting and purling, that's all it is. And on one end, you're putting in some yarn overs, right? So then you're going to put a drawstring right there. When you're done with this, you're going to sew this end to this end, right? And then you can put a drawstring right, and then it's a cowl, okay? You just fold it down, and it's this gorgeous cowl with those beautiful colors and that great composition. And if it gets really cold or what have you, you pull it up over your head, you gather that drawstring, and it's a hat. We're going to figure it out. So I started this, and isn't that beautiful? I mean, those colors, oh my goodness. I think she's really going to like it. Being that she made a beeline for it, I think she's really going to like that. So that's, that's what I have going on there. And uh, we'll see how much of the yarn I use on that. But this one's not even, this was a gift. This one isn't even part of the challenge. So I had to start something for the challenge, which I did. And I'm using, um, I've got this. This has a wool content. It's not, it's not, it's a um, uh, hand washed, lay flat to dry because it's got the wool content. And then I also got a couple skeins of Big Twist. And we know I like my Big Twist, right? 
I'm making a hat and I tried it on one of my granddaughters and it fits. So I'm using as the main color the cake yarn and then the, here's the big twist that's the second color and I've got another color I'm going to add into that. So those two projects brand new just started because I just got the yarn. So I, I couldn't hold off. I mean, if you're going to be part of a challenge and it says you need to get your stuff done by said date, well, then you need to get your stuff done, right? Get out, get, get moving, woman, get moving. Start knitting and crocheting and stuff. Do something, woman. But anyway, so those are two new projects that I started. How much fun is that? I know there's more. I'm pretty sure I started something else. I don't know. I'm going to go through some other things. I have a notebook here. Look at this. I mean, as I lean down, I didn't want to lean down. Look, see, I have a notebook. I'm using it just for this couple weeks. I mean, let's not get carried away. Do people use their notebooks all year? Yes, of course they do. Do, do I use a notebook all year? Uh, yeah, uh, not necessarily. But look what I did. See, these are all the things that I worked on this week. And then the end next to them means it's new. And then the check mark means I finished it. You know, like, like this, I finished. And the harvest thing I finished. And oh, I finished something else. Look at my little mitts. That's right. I finished it. I got my thumbs. I got thumbs. I got a thumb. Look at that. I got my thumbs. I got my thumbs. Look, aren't those awesome? Yeah, I got my thumbs. Yeah, I did. So got my ends woven in, got my thumbs. This is a Queensland Perth yarn. And this is a wool yarn. I did this on size threes. It is a Barocco pattern in the Barocco booklet 366. And it is uh, the pattern name is hook and it didn't take a lot of yarn it really didn't it took um, um about 32 grams of a fingering weight on this the pattern does call for a worsted weight i've made it with worst i've made it with all different weights of yarns but that's what i did with this one with the fingering weight so really happy with that uh, let's see um i'm gonna go down my little list since i seem to be a little discombobulated right here i was working on my grandson working on making him a stuffed animal. Well, it's not really a stuffed animal, but it's kind of close. This is a rag doll. Look, I got some eyes. Do we do we like the blue or should I go with maybe a golden? I like the circle. Um, so this is the head as evidenced by the eyes. Here's part of the body that I'm working on. Let me sew that here. It's a flat rag doll. So I'll have the arms and the legs on that. And then I think this is the 30 amigurumi rag dolls. I'll link the book down below too. But loving that. So I've got, this is the yarn that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby. And if anyone knows when the clearance is coming, you know, help everybody out, right? I think I'll set this one out, but by golly, that doesn't mean I'll let other people, won't let other people know. This is called Stripe Height. It was uh, 265 yards for the 100 grams, three and a half ounces. And this is an 80% acrylic, 20% wool, and it is just cuddly, soft, and feels great. I think he's going to love it. I gave mommy a choice between a couple of yarns. She also picked this one. And with the, the center, the computer screen part, is that part of a mandala cake. And I think that that is just the absolute perfect color for that. And I'm trying to get that done for his fifth birthday. It's this week. Yeah. So really excited about that. Just moving right along, right? Having a blast. I see, did I get everything? Huh, I don't know. I'm just going to grab things right now and then I'll look to make sure I got everything. I'm working on my slippers. These are the two needle slippers that I'm making for my things for making Thursday. I've gotten more. I added some more pink at the end. So I I now understand this shape, this weird origami is gonna be a slipper. It doesn't make sense. Uh, so once this gets turned up, see I've got the other pink right here, sorry. See, and then you go like that. And, and I have to make another one of these green hourglass things and that'll be the heel. Yes. So this is really nice. I don't think it's going to fit me. I didn't make it long enough. Well, I mean, it'll stretch. It might. Uh, but I've got the girls, my uh, daughter and daughter-in-laws. I think that they will really like this, especially the colors. It is very warm. This I'm making it with the uh, Patents Classic Wool. It is a super wash DK. And this uh, comes, uh, this is the uh, deep blush and apple color. To me, it's hot pink and chartreuse, but whatever. You do you, Patents. You do you. Uh, each 50 gram ball has approximately 125 yards. And it feels great. It just feels great. 
So I think this is going to be a lot of fun and I am just plugging right along on that one. I really, really am. I'm going to set this out of the way and then I'm going to regret it as soon as I do that. Let's see, what else do I have? I have so much that I have been working on. It has been amazing. Look at this. This is, it's called Scarflet, and I'm using my Arcane Fibers Yarn Jungle Waters size 3 knitting needles. I'll have this link down below. Look at the detail on that. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. And you'll see that I do have the, um, the lifelines in there. So you'll see the lifelines are in there. This is that pink thread right here. So I did a lifeline at the first chart right here, and this is where I was last week. This is the second chart right here, and then I've gone past the second chart. I have 102 rows into this already, which uh, is quite a bit. And it's not predictive for me yet. I think it's going to be absolutely stunning. Once I finish chart three, chart four is a... Uh, a, you repeat it multiple times, like six or seven times. So I'll, it'll be a while. I was like, like, oh, I'm almost done. This is nowhere near done. I mean, this is going to be a beautiful, a beautiful crescent shawl. I am just looking forward to that. I like the details. It's been a while since I've done a, a really good lace and cable project. So it's, you know, it's time. But isn't that detail gorgeous? And again, that's the Jungle Waters colorway from Arcane Fibers. It is beautiful. So really enjoying that. I have another order of Arcane Fibers I believe is in customs at the moment. So when it comes in, I will definitely be showing that off because I'm excited. I got some other things that are secret that I've already got started. I'm waiting on that yarn for. So another project that I started with lace. It's not really lace. This is the uh, a Red Heart. Um, what is this one? I don't know. It's a uh, Red Heart yarn and uh, it's one of those very much like the um, hobby or hobium type yarns that comes in the let me see if i can get it up here the four strands and that's how it changes colors it has the four strands like a sewing thread and after it's gone so far then one of the sewing threads will be cut i don't cut it they did and they'll tie on a different color so there's a little tiny knot there don't mess with the knot leave it alone just crochet it over knit it over there you go but it has this beautiful gradient so i've used quite a bit in that middle i am now getting into this nice uh teal blue and I have two cakes of that and I'm at the same part of both what I was doing is starting both of them at the very center of the lightest color of the cake and as soon as I got to that knot I switched to the other yarn so I would have enough to use two full cakes there's 623 yards the pattern that I'm following is daisy chain and one of the samples they used over 1200 yards or about 1200 yards and I have 1243 so I'm like okay I'll do that this is gonna be big so I am crocheting this with a size E crochet hook and look at the gradient. Whoops, there we go. Isn't that stunning? That is just growing so nicely. Now you can wear it as a bib type if you choose to. Obviously I'm gonna do that right now just to show you, but isn't that pretty? And then you can see the other colors. So the question that I have, seeing that it's this large at the moment, do I continue bouncing between both and try to use up all of both skeins? Because I have this much and another one too. So this is only one of them. I have this much more left. Do I do that or do I stop cutting or stop cutting my yarn and bouncing skeins and just finish with one of them? I mean, it's, it's going to be good size. I might grow a little bit longer before I make that decision. But, um, you know, that's, that's a... At least 36 inches right there you know from here to here and then we've got this much more so it's it's going to get well past my wingspan it really will um, but I like all those colors coming through I, I think that's pretty let me know what you would do whether you would make it just this big huge hug of a shawl or cut it a little bit shorter and just make something else I mean I have the yarn I, I, I'm not conserving it for anything else. I have plenty of the yarn. I could definitely make a huge um, shawl with this. And you like the pattern. So this is a free pattern that if you're interested in learning how to crochet with the symbols, this one's really good. They have the symbols and they have the key with it that tells you what each symbol means. Good. And then they go into line by line instructions. They have the written word 
and then they show the symbols. They show the pat the row before and the row you're working on. So you can really see but with the visual what you're doing. And then you can also scroll down farther into the pattern and you have it all written out like this with just the symbols. So you have multiple ways that you can do that and really hone up those symbol reading skills. It's really a good, a good pattern for that. I, I thought so. I really like it. And if you wanted to make just an, a, a rectangle stole as opposed to the triangle, they also have that written out in the graph format too. I, I, mean, I think it might actually have it written out in word format also. I'm not positive, but they do have that in graph. So you don't have to really do a whole lot of anything crazy. You know how everything lines up and what it looks like. So that's a really fun one to play with. And then I liked that pattern so much so I started to make a blanket for Boggy Creek adapted from that. And that is right here. And it is so bright and so happy. And I, I absolutely adore this pattern. So I didn't follow it 100%, but I did base it one. I definitely based it off of the Daisy Chain Shawl. And that, again, it's, it's in a triangle format. And I made this into a rectangle. So, you know, I had to do some fiddling to make it work, but I did. And I added the black to kind of break up all the brights. Uh, I love the brights. My husband's not a fan of it being so crazy like that. I was planning on putting cars right through here. But uh, one of the lives that we were on, uh, one of the Boggy Creek representatives was there and I asked the question about adding the car buttons and they would prefer that I did not do that. So if I'm not able to crochet some little wheels or something, you know, I've got thread, um, and, and put on like an embroider or something on like that, or if I can't find an embroidered patch that's not the same as a button, then I'm just going to leave it as the blanket as is, finish it off. And, and be done with this one and pack this. Uh, they're expecting to have them. They would like to have all of them by the 31st of January. So I'm really pushing it. Uh, I, you know, for that matter, I have the, the fish that I sent to my sister. I had sent that one on the 4th and it should have been there the 8th. And it's still bouncing back around. It spent, uh, you know, five, six days in Denver. And then it says it went to Florida and then it's back in Denver. I don't understand. It just... You know, so I, I really need to get on the stick because nobody plans that, right? Um, get this one done so then I can put it in the box with the other three that I have already ready, staring at me going, mail me, mail me. But I know I can shove this one in there too. So I really need to finish that. So instead of finishing that like the, you know, um, smart, uh, uh, yeah, smart person would do, I started another one because it was... I had in my head, I wanted to, I, these are all knit, I mean, not knit, these are crochet. I crocheted all the blankets. I also crocheted squares and sent them off to Lenan from Nina's Knots Crochet when she had her challenge going on. And, uh, you know, and I, I did all of that and everything was crochet and I wanted to make a knit blanket. So you can do knit, you can do crochet, it doesn't matter. The size needs to be 35 inches wide to 40, 35 to 40 inches wide and 40 to 50 inches long. That's your parameters right? And make sure it's easy care. That that would be really helpful. So I wanted to do a knit blanket. Now I had parameters in my head because I wouldn't want to make it easy. Oh no, are you kidding? I wanted it to go from the center out. So once I got everything set up, I could just keep going around and around and around and around and around and not pay attention. That's what I wanted. But I didn't want it to be a square and I didn't want it to be a circle because, you know, I mean, that circle wasn't going to fit the the parameter dimensions. I wanted it to be a rectangle in the round. I, I'm, I'm a little extra like that. It's okay. And then, um, you know, I wanted to put some lace in it. I didn't want it to just be a flat material or anything like that. I wanted some lace. I wanted some movement. And I was staring at just the feather and fan pattern, old shale feather and fan pattern for, I don't know how long. It was way too long, just longer than I'd like to truly admit. And just couldn't figure out how to make it into a rectangle like like I did with this before starting, right? I made that into a rectangle and then followed the pattern around, right? I just, I don't know what was wrong with me. My husband's like, just take a break and walk away. That didn't help. Because <laughs> I didn't take a break and I didn't walk away. No, I got this. You're not the boss of me. Yeah, okay, good job. You know, and, and so I did, I started it multiple times. I really did. I kept starting and pulling it out. I'm like, that's, how do I do this? It's not working. 
Well, I got something that I like and I'm really happy with it. And you know what? It's turning out better than I could have imagined. I do have my rectangle shape. I am doing feather and fan in the round and I'm just doing it. And I'm making my patterns kind of different each time. And I'm loving it. So this is like 17 by 14 at the moment. I just started to add this blue. Oh my gosh, isn't that stunning? I am so thrilled with the way that the feather and fan naturally does its undulating. And that's what I liked about that daisy chain, you know, that I took from the daisy chain blanket and turned into a or shawl that I turned into a blanket. I liked the movement. I liked that. So this has all of the movement that I was wanting. I'm adding in all the colors that I personally enjoy, right? You know, and, and I know the kids are going to enjoy it. This might not be the adult blanket unless you're like from the eighties, right? It might not be the adult blanket, but it's definitely the happy, super bright kids blanket. And I am so thrilled with this. So I started this in the center right here with that, that right there is that stockinette stitch. That's the center. And when, as I went around, when I started the feather and fan, it naturally folds over like that and really exaggerating that pattern. And oh my gosh, I could not be more thrilled. Absolutely thrilled. And one of the other things that I'm doing, because I, I wanted the, the corners to line up right. Now I just don't care. I just don't care. They're going to do what they're going to do. As long as I'm increasing eight stitches, you know, two per each corner, right? Every other row, it'll continue to grow. It will continue to be a rectangle. It's not going to be too many stitches, too little stitches. It'll, it'll just work out fine as my rectangle. So then what I'm doing in between, I can do anything I want. So here's the feather and fan, right? Right here. And I've got pearl rows. There's a pearl row, pearl row, that, those bumps. So I'm putting that there. And that's just adding that texture right through here. And I love the separation with a couple of garter stitch rows with another contrasting color. And then each section of pink, I'm doing a little different. So I'm still doing that lace, but you can see how close, I've got all the holes are a lot closer and everything. So I did different the way that I did them here. I don't have all the pearl bumps going through here. And here I do have some of the pearl bumps, but in a different order. So I'm doing a little different. Um, each time, I don't care how many rows I'm putting in. I, I just put in however many until I feel like I need a stripe of color. That's what I'm going with and thoroughly enjoying this as a project thoroughly enjoying this as just so bright and fun so now my thing is what other colors should i add um i think i have enough of the pink that i may be able to finish it off as a pink blanket with just the stripes going through it and then i was also thinking i could do um more stripes you know here i've got the blue one right here um do i just keep these three colors or add more. I have orange, but I don't think orange will go. I do have yellow. I have uh, the varsity blue, which is a brighter royal blue. I have another color of purple. Um, you know, so I have some other choices as far as that goes. But uh, surprisingly, I don't have as much as you would think with a big twist because I've actually been using it, which is fun, right? Yeah, I mean, those are those are having a blast. So this has been a lot of fun working on that. What other things? I have more stuff here. Oh, let me see. Oh, wait, are you missing something? Yeah, I think so. I think we're definitely missing something. Look at this. Yeah, you know what this is. These are my husband's sweaters our sweaters. These are my husband's sleeves to his arcane fiber sweater. This color is Saint Nick. This is their worsted weight yarn. And then the cups I have in charcoal right there. And it is absolutely gorgeous. This is one full skein per sleeve, plus of course the cuff, but a full skein. So now I'm at the point where I need to wind another skein attach them on, finish up the sleeves, and then start the body. So it's coming along nicely. He loves it. I absolutely love it. I don't think I could be any more thrilled with it. The Arcane Fibers is such a joy to work with. So I have this project in the shawl that I've shown. I have some other stuff that I'm working on that I haven't shown yet. So I've, I've worked with multiple of the colors and playing with it and feeling the yarns. And I am absolutely thrilled. 
and I already have another project in my head that I want to make and it's part of the, the yarn that I bought because um, I, I got five skeins coming. I do. I got five more skeins of fingering weight coming that'll go with the yarns that I already have and I'm waiting to start the next project so I want to see how well they go and where I'm going to place those yarns and uh, I'm so happy with this particular yarn. The, the yarn purchases that I've made, um, I've already ordered uh, multiple, I've ordered three times, you know, I mean I've ordered quite a bit. I'm, I'm so thrilled with it. Uh, if you've not seen it, check it out. You know, even if you don't buy any, you don't have to. I'm not telling you to buy any. I'm not, I'm not affiliated. Um, look at some of the videos. They're very pleasing. Look at the pictures. It looks like AI. It, it does. To me, the pictures are so stunning. They look like something that, um, you know, you find beautiful pictures, right? You know, photographers do beautiful pictures. And the yarn next to it, it's like you put into chat box or AI and said, make yarn that looks like this. And that's what Tyler has done. So it is just absolutely stunning. I'm going to look at my little cheat sheet right here again and make sure that I actually brought, because I have 11 projects that I worked on this week. Did I show 11? I, I don't know. Did I, did I show 11? So I, I finished the three. The sweater I'm wearing, the Harvest sweater and the hook mitts, and I started four. I started the one boggy blanket and the hat and the emergency hat and the rag doll, which was my grandson's. And yeah, I think I have, I have gone through that. That's eleven projects I worked on this week. I, I the last I had counted, I think I was at six or seven, and then to have eleven projects that I worked on. It's 12 if you count the lace that I was swatching to try to make the Angelica vest uh, made by um, Marley Bird. But uh, I'm not really counting that because I haven't started anything with it, but I did spend a lot of time swatching with that. But uh, 11 projects that I put a few stitches on. It's growing. Uh, finished three. Yay! It started four. There you go. Yeah, I really needed to start those extra. I, you know, in my defense, Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I obviously need an excuse. And my defense, two of the projects are for the Mystery Yarn Challenge, and they are a timed thing. When you get your yarn, you've got approximately a month to get your project done using all the yarn, or a part of all the yarns, right? So I have the gift yarn that I'm making, the one hat, and then uh, the other three yarns that I get to get three yarns that I'm working on some other stuff with. So we'll see. We'll see how much stuff I get done. And I'll do a specific mystery yarn challenge video for that. So then people can see that for the hashtag and all the other participants that are playing. It'll be easier for them to find and easier for Lori from the Armchair Chef to be able to link to. And, and that'll be a lot of fun. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is my week in review. Holy cow. Um, Talk about just grabbing the, the new year and saying I'm finishing some stuff. You know, 2022, done, right? You know, October sweater, done. I'm, I'm, I'm going through and starting new things. Of course, I'm starting new things. I'm going crazy over here. It's freezing. All I want to do is make blankets. I'm going to regret this, but all I want to do is make blankets. Um, yeah, it's cold. And, um, you know, so I'm having a blast in, in this Right now I'm balanced between starting things and, and completing things. But we'll see how, how well that progresses throughout the year. All right, everybody. You guys have a great day, night, evening, whatever it happens to be. And I will talk to you again later. Bye-bye.